So you've learned the five pentatonic positions and explored the cage system for guitar, but how do these two ideas relate to each other and how can you use this in your playing? In my first lesson on the cage system for guitar, I said that the cage system is like a filing cabinet for everything you ever learn on guitar. So in this lesson, I would like to expand on this concept and introduce you to caged pentatonics. So if you're new to mixing rhythm and solo guitar or lead guitar, this lesson will give you everything you need to get started. Let's start with an overview of how the system works, after which I will break down each position in more detail. Take this opportunity to pause, grab a guitar and perhaps a cup of coffee, and while you're at it, I would be grateful if you could tap the like button. <sighs> right, let's get started. The idea of caged pentatonics is simple. You have five positions of major and minor pentatonics, and five positions of major and minor chords. These overlap with each other which means wherever you place your hand on the fretboard, you will always have access to a chord and a pentatonic scale that work together from one of these five caged positions. For example, position one of the minor pentatonic scale overlaps with our position one minor caged chord. Position two overlaps with position two, three with three, four with four, and five with five. This system allows you to file away chord shapes and scales together into any one of our five positions. This is a concept you'll be able to use more and more as you learn new positions of chords, scales, arpeggios, and modes. But as the main focus of this lesson will be helping you to visualize and glue chords and pentatonics together, allowing you to go between rhythm guitar and lead guitar seamlessly, let's get into each position in more detail. And as the most common caged positions used by guitarists tend to be positions one and four, this is what we will be looking at today. I will begin by showing you exactly how to do this with both major and minor chords and their corresponding pentatonic positions, starting with position one minor chords. Here is position one of the minor pentatonic scale, and here is the first minor cage shape. Notice how the chord shape fits nicely within the scale and that they share the same root notes, in this case, A. Once you can visualize this relationship, you can do a few things. One being that you can target specific notes of the chords within your solos other than the root to really highlight the sound of the chords you're improvising over. For example, you could target the minor third or the fifth of the chord. Another being that you could blend pentatonics and chords together to create a hybrid rhythm lead style similar to what you might expect to hear from either John Frusciante or Jimi Hendrix. A really useful and hands-on way of practicing the connection between caged chords and pentatonic scales is to play one measure or four beats worth of a rhythm using the chord and then four beats of lead using the corresponding pentatonic scale. Groove and timing are important here, so try and keep it simple at first if you struggle with this concept. Here's an example. Now let's look at how we would approach a standard position 1 major chord in the cage system. As this is a position 1 major chord, you will need to play position 1 of the major pentatonic scale over this. As you can see, this shape fits perfectly within the scale, allowing you to weave pentatonic fills around your chord and target specific chord tones. As I mentioned previously that this lesson will be covering positions 1 and 4 of both major and minor chords and their respective pentatonic patterns, we will now move on to position 4. But be sure to watch to the very end where I will show you how to play through a full chord progression using just what we've learnt within this lesson. Here is position 4 of the minor pentatonic scale, and here is the 4th minor cage shape. Notice that once again the chord shape fits nicely within the scale and that they share the same root notes. Your job is to try and visualize the chord within the pentatonic scale when playing lead to target notes within the chord, and vice versa. If you're playing a chord, try to visualize the pentatonic scale so that you have the option of playing in and around the chord shape when playing rhythm guitar. <laughs> position 4 of the major pentatonic scale, and here is position 4 of a major caged chord. The chord shape fits within the scale perfectly, giving you lots of options for chord tone targeting and playing fills in and around the chord. 
You will quite often see guitarists play this chord with a bar using either the third or fourth finger. The most common reasons being that it's much more comfortable and easier to play, but also that it frees up a couple of fingers, which is ideal when you're going between rhythm and lead, or a mix of the two. Something that is also worth mentioning at this stage is that when using pentatonics over chords in a Hendrix Frusciante style, you don't need to stay strictly within the pentatonic pattern that fits with a chord. If you already know your five pentatonic scale positions and how they fit together, then you can slip in and out of the positions either side of the chord quite easily without getting too far away from the chord you intend to return to. A good example of this can be seen when playing over our position 4 or A shape major chord. You will frequently see guitarists use the next pentatonic position up or down from the chord to give more range and movement. Here's an example. Okay, so now we know which pentatonic positions fit over the four most common chord grips within the cage system, we can put this to use using a chord progression. For this, I will use a very standard 1, 5, 6, 4 progression in the key of G. So that would be G, D, E minor, and C. The first time through the progression, I will use a G in first position, a D in fourth position, an E minor in fourth position, and a C in first position. And the second time through, I will use a G in 4th position, a D in 1st position, E minor in 1st position, and finally C in 1st position, before resolving back to our 1st position G chord, where we started. I'll keep things relatively simple so you can follow along easily. Give this example a listen, and then try it out for yourself. Once you have this concept down and want to take it to the next level, you may want to use positions 2, 3 and 5 of the minor or major pentatonic scale and each corresponding caged chord. The advantage in this is that you will have more options for voicings of different chords and you will be able to play over any chord progression without ever shifting position on the neck, which will really put your caged guitar knowledge to the test. For example, to play over our 1, 5, 6, 4 progression, so G, D, E minor and C in one fretboard location, we could start with a G first position, D third position, E minor second position and C fourth position, and the corresponding pentatonic shapes would match. So over G position 1, you would use G major pentatonic position 1. Over D position 3, you would play D major pentatonic position 3. Over E minor, position 2, you would use minor pentatonic, position 2. And finally, over C, position 4, you would use C major pentatonic, position 4. If you want to see more lessons like this, then feel free to browse my channel. And don't forget to like and leave a comment. See you in the next one.